Well, today we're gonna work on putting up a new garage door opener. As I mentioned when we moved in, only one of them works. As you can see the one side works. The other side, uh, it's an old Sears Craftsman garage door opener. It's broken, just completely dead or something like that. So my hopes are to install a new one and uh, actually just make use of this one because I actually bought a Sears one off Facebook Marketplace. And we'll see uh, what we can do. So the first thing we're gonna have to do actually before we actually install the garage door opener is kind of clean this place out. <laughs> Still a mess from moving in. So there's the old garage door opener up there. You can see it's a Sears Craftsman. We'll change it out. We actually have a couple of garage door openers here. One my brother gave me, but uh, we got this Sears Craftsman here is what we're gonna install. It's got all the neat stuff. And uh, the guy I bought it off from Facebook Marketplace still had the box and all the instructions. So my hopes are to just pull off that old Sears Craftsman and uh, more or less make use of all the existing hardware that's there. Maybe even make use of the existing wires that's there and get this working fairly quickly. And uh, I guess we'll just see what we can do. There's the outlet there to plug into. So this obviously worked at one time, but you can tell that's a really old Sears Craftsman. She had a new Sears Craftsman there. That one looks pretty good. It works pretty good. So the red one we bought here is kind of the upgraded style of that one there. So first things first, let's clean this place out so I can actually work. After moving in, I found this old tripod in all of our moving boxes. So I set up the Hero 3 Plus camera there. So I'll actually use it to video, kind of cleaning out the garage, put it in fast speed afterwards when we make the video. As I mentioned before, the audio on this is not that good compared to the Hero 7. So I'll, uh, I'll turn this on in a bit and you'll be able to at least have some B-roll of me cleaning this out real, real fast. Okay, step one looks like I just gotta detach this from here. That way the garage door is not attached anymore. It looks like it's pretty simple here. Just a cotter pin of some sort right here. So I'll pop that out, pull it down, then we'll see what's what. Okay, so the cotter pin's out. Door is closed now. Next up, I'm just going to take off these bolts here and lower this piece right off the wall there. Might even leave that bracket there because I have a feeling that Sears will be able to mount right to that bracket. So, get a wrench, take this off, lower it. You can see it was broken. She was holding up the wire. I don't know what happened to it, but uh, let's see.
Okay, a little change of plans on getting this garage door ready. Uh, I got a lead on a wood splitter from Facebook Marketplace. I'll need one for the property here, so I'm actually going to quickly bounce down. It's about an hour and a half to get there, give or take. If I rush there now, I can be back here by 3, 4 this afternoon. I'll grab a, my truck and my trailer and go pick it up. And... Uh, Hopefully I can get back in a bit and finish this installation today or at least get a good ways into it. Well, I had to stop my garage installation. I said I was gonna get a wood splitter. Here it is, it's a Gravely 27 ton log splitter. Subaru engine on it. And uh, it took me about two and a half hours, give or take, to go get that. It's about an hour away stop bank get some cash for it but 1500 bucks not too bad i think these are 2500 brand new by the time you put the taxes in and everything so this will be handy for around here at the house but also at hunt camp when we got to split wood it actually goes down vertical as well um but yeah i uh i think this was a good deal worth stopping my project for and yeah i'll do a video on it afterwards how it works sometime Okay, so, so far we've been pretty lucky. I've got the new garage door opener attached up at the top. Didn't even have to take that bracket off. I just swapped out the old one. I've left the old arm on there because it's actually going to line up pretty good with this one. Then pushing this up into place, it's going to be relatively where it needs to be. That'll take me a second to pop that up there. But in general, it's going together as planned. I uh, took the other one off, just threw it out here with all this other junk and mess. So that one's no more good. Um, here's the front bracket to this one that came out, so it's a little wider. If need be, I'll switch up. I'll switch up the brackets at the front end if need be. This is the this is the bracket. For this one I left the old bracket up there but if need be I'll switch it out if I find it's too loose I'll put this one on it's not a that much to do so we'll see and that's the old bracket off or that's the bracket off this red one but in general if you look it's relatively the same size this can be adjusted out to the same length if need be um, we'll take a look we'll see Going good so far. Well, as I've mentioned before in other videos, these GoPros don't actually last that long. That's old Hero 3, I heard it beeping and bopping and I'm pretty sure it died right as I just temporarily put this Sears Craftsman up. Uh, it's a little bit kludgy, I'll, I'll tighten it up a little bit. But it's up, it looks like it's gonna work pretty good. I will uh, run the wires to it and see if it doesn't work right away. If not, we'll have to run new wires, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work right away. I'll let you know. And I've got my other camera running now. Hopefully it doesn't run out of battery anytime soon, but I've got a couple extra batteries inside. Browning, did you, where'd you get your collar off from? This little guy just got his, uh, snipped and he's got this collar he's supposed to wear but he must have somehow escaped from it running sit boy sit don't look at the lights that face boys Winnie give him a break okay just so you can see what I've done here I've put the red wire from the old one into the red and the white wire into the wet white assuming 
they were wired that way. It even gives you a little diagram, strip the wires to 7 16 which I did. Um, so because this is a newer one, I'm actually gonna have to put in the two safety wires, I believe. I'll read up on how that's done, but um, I'll have to put those magic eyes in. Otherwise, I'm fairly certain this will not work without the magic eyes. So I think the guy threw everything in here. Instruction manual. Here's the other button operator. Here is one magic guy. Hello. And here is the other magic eye. So just to see if this will work as is, I won't install these magic eyes right away. I'm just gonna point them at each other and try pressing the, the button to see if it'll work. But um, it's the quick and dirty way to make it work and then I'll, I'll wire it in properly afterwards. Okay, so right now I've got the magic eyes plugged in. Samantha's got them held together. It's giving us light, so. Why is one green ones? I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out okay. if it doesn't work. I'll try one of these. So I don't have it attached, which is good. Now she said one of these didn't work. Okay, Eureka. Well, it works, which is good. The magic eyes work. That's good. We just gotta fix it all up, then make it work. I could get real cheap and leave that up there, but we may as well install it somewhat properly. Put the magic eyes down at the bottom where they're supposed to be and uh, go from there. Okay, so it's working good back and forth right now. Now I'm just gonna adjust the how much it closes and how much it opens by twisting this so closing I want it to close less one two let's see how much that does okay that came all the way to the back so that's too far back so I'll put this one two let's see how it goes now okay. Okay, it's not quite as far now, but probably still a little too far. So I'll bring her back two times again. One, two. I'll press it again and we'll see how it comes back, how far it comes back. Okay, that's a little bit better. Just looking where that one is. Probably a little too far. I'm gonna have it go two back as well. One, two. Press her again. I feel like that's still too far. Let me see where this one sits when it is closed. Okay, well, actually, come to look at it, right there on the rafter. Probably about midway on the rafter. Just a quick and dirty way, so I've gotta bring her back, let's say midway on that rafter, and I should be good. So, based on how far I've gone, I'm thinking four more turns back. One, two, three, Four. Let's see what that does. And it's about the right space for how high it needs to go. Press her back and we'll see. Okay. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. 
We'll try it. We'll see what it looks like. We can adjust afterwards, bit by bit. Okay, so the door is working now. It's not quite back far enough. You can kind of see the difference in the heights there. That's a good six inches, give or take. So, let's try one, I guess it's not a filter and a half turn, and we'll see what's what. Hey buddy, relax. Okay, it's really, really close there. If I just do a quarter turn, positive. And we'll press her back there and we'll see how high it comes up. Okay, and it's still like five inches, so. One and a half. Let's see. Okay, so that looks pretty well perfect that way. Bring her back. Ooh, we are very close. Let's turn her back up just a little more. Like that. I might end up back at that stupid bump stop. If I press it, it looks like they have it set up so the minute you press, you can't stop it halfway. Okay. That's more than good enough. I can get my vehicle in there. It's within an inch. I'm really, really close to the bump stop. I don't really want to go much further than that. Um, yeah, I'm going to attach one more of these brackets here or some other way just to buttress it up a little bit there. It's kind of flimsy. And afterwards, I'll clean up this wire a different way. I'll run it up across the top of the rafters or something and down the side. Yeah, right there across the top and down the side. Find my staple gun. We'll try that. Easy, buddy. You want to go for a poop or a pee or something? You just look so goofy with that cone of shame on. <laughs> okay, one thing worth checking in here is if this works, well, the red light is working. So let's press it. Eureka! It's closing the door. Perfect! So that's handy. I didn't have to install the other piece. I'll save all these pieces since they're both master crafts. Might be able to do something with it. Yeah, that door looks a little crooked on there, but oh well. And uh, yeah, press her again, open it back up, and it works. I'll install the punch, the uh, key code one in, and then we'll go from there. So even though it came with this, and I'm sure this is a big upgrade, and you can lock it and unlock it, turn the light on, and this and that, uh, since that's in the house, it's not really going to matter. I'll save it. That other one works fine. So, although, like I said, it is handy that if I was to press the light button there, I could probably turn the light on and off, but for what it's worth, we have lights in here anyway, so we don't really need the extra lights for no reason. Okay, one cool thing about actually finding another Sears Craftsman on Facebook Marketplace was with our old Sears Craftsman, now we can actually program button number two to open this new one. I just actually programmed my remote to use the old one. So the way to do that is you press the learn button, the light is on. There, it found it, you heard it snap when I pressed the second one. So now this second button will close this one. So Samantha can open the garage door by pressing that one. And she can open her garage door. I say her, I, I don't really know which side we'll park on once the winter comes, but she can open it by pressing that one. So that is pretty handy. And then you press this one and it'll open this one. This, uh, this new machine is just a little bit quieter than the old machine over there, but That'll be handy there now. So one thing I said I'd do is buttress this up a little bit. So I'm gonna do something like this. Put that there 
right on there like that and kind of lag it into the top up there. That way it'll be hitched in four spots. I don't think it's quite necessary, but might make it just a little more secure. So I'm gonna lag into the wood here using these little mini lag bolts that came with the hardware kit. And I'm gonna try out this Milwaukee impact drill. Well, it's just a driver actually with these socket adapters. I'll see if it works. Okay, I've got all four pieces in there now. It's much more solid, it doesn't move at all. I did just use this impact. It worked perfectly to lag those in. One thing I did notice when just checking this other one and setting it, this thing is really actually off center here, if you look. So I think I'm gonna unlag it from there and put it on the other side of this light fixture here. Yes, it'll be hanging in the front of the light, but I don't know. Seems weird the way they did it. I'll see what I can do to just straighten it back up. Okay. So I've straightened it up now. You can see it kind of lines up straight. It's really tight on this side. I brought the brackets back there. And you can see now I've got these other brackets. I'm gonna install them on the inside so I have four way secure on this one as well. Again, it's a little goofy looking. I got that light kind of in the way there. But by the time it's all done, it's really not gonna move at all and uh, we'll be set. So one thing I just thought of is because I already have the switch on the inside, I could actually install this one here on the wall or something inside here. That way, once you're out here, you can open and close it real quickly just pressing this button, turn the light on and off real quickly, pressing this light. But the one inside will still work as well as long as I just put the wires into the same back end here. I assume it'll work. I'll just do a quick little trial to see. Okay, I've got it plugged in up here just to see if it'll work at the exact same time. Okay, well, that's a good sign. The light worked when I press light. And that works when I press that. And I guess that is kind of handy. I could come in here and lock it from the inside if need be. That way you can't open it from in the house. I don't know, whatever. So it's the end of the day, Sammy. And the last thing we got to do is we just got to staple these wires all up, kind of run them nice and neat along the rafters. Then more or less we're done. We didn't get the garage as clean as we wanted to. Hang tight, buddy but uh, at least it'll be a functioning garage door opener for both of us then. Right, Sam? <laughs> Yeah.
Okay, so it's about a week later there since I did the garage door opener out there. Um, I'll take you to one final run through of everything that was done, just show you how it's all done and buttressed up and looking good. Um, so we'll start here. As you mentioned, this door does work. You can see it, it'll open up the second garage door where my truck's parked without problems. And uh, this one will open the first garage door. So we'll go out and take a look. I think the boys are already outside. Hey, Winchester, let's go. Hockey equipment drying out from summer hockey here. So yeah, let's see how it looks. Hey Browning, give him a good rip. Have a good rip boys, let's go for a walk. So you can see we didn't quite finish cleaning out the garage. I'll turn the light on here. The garage is kind of loaded back up after I had unloaded it all, thrown it out all on the driveway. But um, yeah, the garage door is all Openers all installed here. Now we've run the wires down the side, cleaned it all up. Looks really good. The safety switches are installed at the bottom on both sides. And as I mentioned, I installed the opener that's meant for the inside in here. So now you can um, turn the light on and off by pressing it. Uh, as I mentioned, that lock button, I never really played with it. If I press it, it'll close the door. But yeah, it's uh, it's turned out pretty good. I really like this garage. Uh, we're gonna turn it into a shop. That'll be another video when I actually start working on cleaning out this place and building the shop. But I somewhat started, you guys, if you see at the start of the video, this wall kind of had a bunch of junk on it from when we moved in. So I started kind of clearing it out and I'm gonna clear all this wall out, I think and put some benches and obviously keep this place clean. Winter's coming soon. So we wanna park our vehicles in here for the winter. But yeah, the garage door is all installed. They work great. This one works good again since I cleaned it up. And uh, all in all, it was a job well done for 150 bucks or something like that on Facebook Marketplace. New door opener, works perfect, easy to install. Works in conjunction with the old Craftsman and both my and Samantha's car openers work here too. So, um, nice little job. It's, uh, it's about the middle of August right now and it's already starting to get cool at night. We can feel it coming down. So, well, that's one of the first main projects the house complete. A lot more videos to come and hopefully that garage will make some nice videos as I upgrade it later on. Good job, eh boys? Hey. Eh?